Today I would like to have a look at spoon wings in Formula 1. So first of all, what is the purpose of the rear wing? Right, it's downforce. If I want downforce, I need lower pressure below and higher pressure above for a force vector pointing downwards, which means I need a straight wing. Now, if I have a curved wing, I have areas where the force vector is not only pointing downwards, but also to the side, which means that I will create some side force and less downforce. So in other words, straight wings are the most efficient wings. But during a Formula 1 season, there are many different tracks like Monza, Monaco, Silverstone, all tracks with very different characteristics and the cars run on different setups, which means teams need different rear wing levels. You usually need a low downforce wing for Monza and a high downforce wing for Monaco. But there are also tracks which need a downforce level in between, like Silverstone. You need a good amount of downforce for all the fast corners, but because of the higher speeds you can gain lap time by reducing drag. So how do you do this? If you're a team with lots of budget, you simply create a straight wing that sits between low and high downforce, the medium downforce rear wing. But that also means that you will need a new rear wing pillar which supports the wing in the center and you will need new end plates with new tip elements that are the small wing elements between rear wing and end plates. If all of that needs to be new, it means high cost. So smaller teams ask themselves, can we not keep our high downforce pillar in the center and have the low downforce end plates? That way you use an existing pillar and existing end plates and only need to produce a new curved wing in between. The downforce level is similar to a straight medium downforce wing, but a bit less efficient. The curved wing also gives you the advantage of having a strong suction in the center and relatively little induced drags at the tips due to the lower downforce profiles on the outside. One disadvantage of these curved wings is that the DRS drag delta when enabling DRS is limited because the outer rear wing flap will hit the regulation box before the inner one is in its low drag position. So in the end it's a compromise. And it's about saving parts and saving money. And that creates the so-called spoon wings. But what do you do if you only have a high downforce pillar and high downforce end plates, but you need a low downforce wing for Monza? Yes, that happened. Or in early 2019, new front wing regulations were introduced and most teams could not recover the front downforce of the 2018 season. So teams used spoon wings to balance the downforce between front and rear and changed later in the season to straight wings, where they could use the same pillar they were already running all year long, which saved work again. What about you? Do you like curved or straight wings better? Let me know in the comments below.